Now this is a car we're going to use for our tow dinghy for RV. Uh, this is a 2002 uh, Pontiac Grand Am. Really great shape. Uh, we just got it back from servicing. Uh, got a oil change, a transmission flush, and the whole thing checked over. And we're going to have to replace some uh, some bushings here another year or so, but nothing that can't wait right now. So we're going to attempt to put a tow bar on the front end of this thing. Well, here's a tow bar that I bought. It's a Blue Ox BX1648, and uh, the tow bar comes with a sheet of instructions, a couple other sheets of instruction, the quick removable uh, clamps, and you, you pull these in turn, and they pop out like so. This is a tow bar. Actually, it fits um, not only the Grand Am, but it also fits uh, 99 to 2003 Oldsmobile Alero. Chevy Malibu and Cutlass. So it's kind of a generic for several different cars. Um, basically what it looks like is uh, there's going to be five bolts on each side. So the base plate features these quick disconnects. Um, these are the tabs for the uh, safety chains, one on each side. This is for the trailer connector, which I may or may not use uh, not sure about it because the ones that I've seen look a little bit on the ugly side and uh, I may just cut these off and then just use a little pigtail that's hidden when it's not used. I will see. A couple of safety uh, cables which go from the frame to the uh, base plate so that if the base plate tends to come off it'll still be connected to the frame. A uh, package of hardware. Uh, these are grade 5 hardened uh, bolts. And a bunch of these. Uh, these are kind of a blind nut, I guess you would call them. They're a nut with a little welded on plate and a welded on rod. And that allows you to stick these behind like frame members and then bolt to it. Now you can need a few uh, tools and accessories. Um, I've got some red Permatex thread lock, uh, which they recommend using. And also 13 32nd drill. I've got a uh, quarter cable impact wrench. I also got a uh, Bosch drill, but my experience with these things is that's not going to be sufficient. So right here I've got my Milwaukee hole shooter, which that should drill the holes fine. Now it's also been my experience with drilling these big holes that um, it can get away from you and actually it can rip the drill out of your hands and injure you, so you got to be real careful when you're drilling these big holes and it's really nice to have a drill that has a handle like that. So we got the car ready to come into the garage. I uh, got a couple small ramps here and we're going to start here pretty soon. So here we are on tow bar day. Uh, we're going to install it today. Uh, one of the things I have to do is I've read through the instructions three or four times and since this actually the same tow bar is used on several different model GM cars. I'm going to have to kind of verify things as I go. One of the things I'm going to do, and I'll show you what I mean by it, where the lower dam is there, the, the lower vents, just enough room for this to fit in here, like that. And so what the instructions say to do bolt the base plate on and then adjust and then put the front uh, grill back on uh, temporarily and then adjust the base plate up and down before drilling so that you make sure to get the attachment centered through here we need to um, to adjust the base plate up and down with the bumper on so that means we're going to have to kind of temporarily put it on for a few seconds uh, so the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to mark where the top one is centered using the square uh, and a sharpie. And I'll show you how after I get it done when I do that, but it's hard to hold the camera and slide under the car. Okay, so I'm under the car, and then I feed this to the you square it up here, and then run it to the top of top of the um, access there. And put a mark in, then run it down to the bottom, and then put another mark in. So that means that attachment has to go between here and here when I put the bracket on for it to fit through the front. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. I don't know how this will end up helping, but it may give me just an extra frame of reference. 
According to the instructions, the first part is to remove these four things on the top, and I re I've pulled that one. And basically, what you do is you got to get a little tool like this. Basically, you just fit that tool in there like that, and then it'll just pop right up. So, if you don't have a tool like this, it might be a pain in the, in the you know what to try to get these off. Well, here's where the instruction sheet, step two, is incorrect. Um, these headlights come off differently, and it looks like I got to take this shroud off here to get to the headlight uh, to take those off. And those shrouds just have the same little dealings that were on here. The other thing I'm doing with a paint pen, or you can use a white sharpie, is any hardware like this that comes off on the underside. For instance, I marked this an A, and then right here I marked that an A, so I know this goes back. So this will help in reassembly. Well, after I removed the shroud, I found these two clips. There's one here and one here, and basically you've got a probably easier to do with a small pair of pliers. Um, it's kind of a spring steel here, and then you just pull them like that, and then the headlights come right out. This is different than, of course, the instruction manual. You kind of need to pay attention to how this thing goes apart so you can get it back together. This thing actually can turn 360 degrees, but it's got to be up because it fits into a slot here, and that adjusts the headlights. So make sure when you put this back together that you get that in here, and that it's not laying on the side. So again, kind of watch how things uh, tear apart. And take a video like I am so you know how to put it back together. Okay, at this point I've basically just given up on the instructions and just trying to figure out how to take this off. So right now I've taken three bolts off the valence on each side and then looks like I got some clips under here, some clips on the back, and then we'll see how close it is to getting off. Okay, and now there's a couple little uh, things here underneath the uh, bumper and they luckily they just kind of pull right off. And then on each side uh, of the wheel well, on the lower half, there's three little buttons, little, little uh, plastic buttons I got to pop out. Okay, now where the metal and plastic of the bumper come together, looks like a retaining clip plus three nuts. And I'll be darned if they're not upside down. Okay, this was nowhere near what the manual says on how to take this stuff off, so you're just going to have to kind of play it by ear. This is the passenger side. We finally got down to right here. This spot here is where the mountain's got to go. And then when we go swing around here to the other side, this is the bear. This has stuff on it that's not even in the manual, in the disassembly manual. This air dam thing and this I can't get off all the way, I can't get behind it, but I think I can open it up enough to slide the uh, base plate in behind it. So now we're going to do a test fit of the base plate and see how close it is. Okay, to say this is a, putting this tow bar on, um, to say this is a pain in the rear end is a severe understatement. Uh, we got it in about three quarters of the way, I got it in all the way on this side, and I'm finishing up putting it on this side. This. Uh, thing here it's a oil line looks like you got to be very careful of that because it, you got to kind of bring it up of front of it and then over on the side here there's a little dimple that uh, that fits into and so I got about another inch or so to go up here let's see what happens well okay here's the first test fit we temporarily put the uh, grill back on and uh, these fit perfect here in here. I mean, you can pull these off here like this, and, and they just come right off like that. Um, not bad at all. You just gotta push them in. There you go. However, these are not so good. It's pushing down on them and they don't stick out far enough. So I have to say, Blue Ox, I'm kind of disappointed in you. You can't make one tow bar fit several vehicles. You know, you got to kind of make a tow bar per each vehicle. This doesn't work either. This is 
you know, too flush. So I'll probably all I'm going to do with this is probably cut these off. Uh, this here, I probably can drill a hole in the back side of it and just leave it there and then just wrap the safety chain around both pieces, the bumper, I mean the grill and that. It's about the best I'm going to do. I'm a little disappointed in it. Well, we had to pull the toolbar off because um, I am not too happy about how close it is to that transmission line. So what I did is I want to move the whole thing forward by just about a quarter inch or so. So what I did is these are, this is kind of like a little raised pad here uh, on the right and left side that match that match that hole right there on the tow bar. So by cutting the back side, it was going to allow me to move everything forward just a bit. And that will clear this part right here, which is the transmission line. Now, uh, when I bring that thing forward, this is going to be in the way a little bit. So right there where I marked those two marks, I'm going to have to cut a little notch in the tow bar uh, to clear this front side. So the tow bar is actually going to be going to come a little bit forward here. So I got this cleaned up about as much as I can. Unfortunately, though, uh, let me get the light so you can see it. Uh, as you see right there in the center, there's another piece of metal which means that um, the plate doesn't lie flush to this, so I'm going to actually have to put it, probably put a few washers here and there to help. However, one nice thing though is right here in the bottom side, two bolts will go into this, and this is the actual frame itself that goes to the engine. So this here is, you know, not very thick. It's like two pieces of maybe. 1 16th or 1 8th inch steel, but this puppy here down here, I mean, this is like 8th inch to a quarter inch of steel, so this is uh, this is much more substantial. So anyway, that's what we've done here, and I'm going to paint this with a little Rust-Oleum, and then on to the other side to make the other side equal. Okay, and the last mod I had to make, as you can see here, I made a little notch. Um, there you go, I made a little notch right there. That notch is for this transmission cooling line. The Blue Ox instruction manual says this should take three hours to install. Well, so far it's taken me about seven hours and I'm only about halfway done. A lot of the time was trying to figure out how to disassemble the thing because the instructions in most cases were just flat wrong. Other issues I ran across were uh, rusted out bolts and bolts that busted and things like that. And also having to fine uh, tune the base plate by trimming it and cutting things until I got to the point where I was satisfied with it, that it was not rubbing against any uh, transmission lines and those kind of things. So to do the job right, it's really going to take more, much more than three hours. Unless you kind of want to just rush it, then you're probably going to have a rush result.